Hey guys, Barry here and welcome back to the IGS podcast and this is our actually our first podcast of 2020 and w- what a great way to do it with of course you know Kevin here Anderson you know why Kev Dev well Kev what's the crack as we say here in Ireland how's things <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to properly respond with that but hey thank you for having me <laughs> so basically what's the crack means like you know like what's going on you know what's new with you kind of thing uh, it's not okay, actual no. crack <laughs> uh, good good uh what's new with me uh video games it's a new year yeah. uh new apartment um so and the holidays are over which is nice uh like the stress is over for that part so yeah yeah That's so the thing yeah of course like we had your game for impact direct and it actually was the opening game to December's Impact Direct and I personally believe like I know like Impact Direct is mine but I know I'm going to sound biased whatever well can I but I firmly believe that December's Impact Direct is by far the best one yet overall presentation wise I guess visuals uh, maybe game content as well like and guests you know people coming on as well you know special guests saying hello yeah absolutely incredible <clears throat> yeah based from the last one like it feels like an improvement with like yeah the guests and like the snippets between where they the guests made their own like recording of themselves mm. i thought i thought that was cool uh so yeah and it feels like you know more what you're doing yeah like you're improving for each iteration which yeah. is cool yeah yeah and like i do i guess i am looking starting to look for people for impact direct for the next one so yeah. I guess I'll, I'll, like I may as well tell you now I have no exact date, but I'm looking Go to do it. one before Animal Crossing comes out in March. Wait, wait, you're gonna do one before Animal Crossing? Yeah, but no, for the reason being because like once that com- that game comes out, no one's gonna yeah. give a crap. Yeah. So I have to get there before Animal Crossing. You know. Yeah. And when does it come out? Like twentieth of or twenty fifth? Uh, twentieth of March. So maybe yeah. the week beforehand. Maybe yeah. 13th, 14th, whatever it is, you know. I'm like, I'm just thinking about it, but I do have, I'm not going to say who, I have plans to do an, ex, uh, an Impact Direct something, something edition. So yeah. that's the plan this year is to get like exclusive editions from one game oh. dev only, you know, and go with that there, you know. Yeah. So, you know, maybe we'll do like a white Kev dev, imp, uh, you know, edition, maybe down the line. Maybe, you know? <laughs> who knows? Maybe th- we're talking about it right now and no one knows about yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> could be in the works, who knows? Of course. So, yeah, so tell us a bit about yourself, you know, like, uh, <clears throat> who are you and what exactly do you do as well? Well, my name is Kevin and I make video games. That's a short version. Yeah. Uh, but I, I've been, I've been making games for about 10 years. I, I think 10 years ago I started in school. Uh, and I was like 15 then. Uh, so I went to school and then I got an internship at Zoink. Uh, you know the people from Zoink? Uh, Just a wee so bit. As a, le- <laughs> a little bit. Uh, as a level designer. I think that's where like I first got into contact with you. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I was a level designer there and then I became a producer. Uh, so... Um, I got to do that. That was very interesting, a yeah. learning experience for sure. Uh, and then we did uh, a game called Alva's Awakening, me and uh, a few people, uh, Michael Forsland. I don't know if he's been on the podcast. No, but I, well, I, see, well, I guess technically I had uh, Elden Pixels on the show. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. But I guess not Michael, though, but... Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, right, yeah, because it was the artist and the musician. Yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, so me, Michael, uh, and those two, uh, Alex and Robert. I don't want to like f- not name them. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It was Robert uh, Crease, if I'm correct, is it or something? Crease, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, like, uh, four of us made Alva's Awakening uh, on the side mm. uh, on weekends and evenings. And then we, we, uh, we left Swink to make what is now the uh, sequel uh, to Alva's Awakening. Uh, also, we ported Alva's Awakening to uh, consoles. Yeah. So, and then, well, I'm doing the whole story here right now. That's uh, fine. No, keep going with it. No, like, I'll ask questions after you're finished, you know, talking. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, okay, so then I, after 18 months, I decided to leave Elden Pixels uh, to do my own thing. And that's where I'm at right now. So I funded 
uh, or founded uh, YKev. Um, that is my company, and I'm a solo developer. But I got a day job at uh, a studio called Frog Song. Uh, they're very cool people. Uh, a few of them I went to school with a year above me, uh, so they're they're very kind. Uh, so I, that's the that's the thing right now. I I work like sixty percent, so I got specific days dedicated to my own thing, which is like perfect for me right now. Just yeah, it's chill. Yeah, that that, that's, that sounds great. Though. But I mean, like, I guess like you you are living the dream, correct? Yeah, like the thing is like I I think I am living like somewhat of a dream. It's a very a a priv- privileged position because yeah. I don't have the like the stress of like the tiny tiny is coming out soon. We're going to talk about it. Of course, uh, that's why you're here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I I don't have that same stress as a normal studio would have because I have a monthly income from my day job. So uh, it's a very luxury precision, yeah. Uh, in in a way, yeah. And like I feel personally, if <laughs> I like I work a day job as well, five days a week, yeah. like in a shop, you know. And I feel if I left there, you know, obviously I wouldn't have as much of an income, you know, if I went on social welfare, you know, dole whatever. But I mean, yeah. I'd love to work, you know, just for myself and just be creative as possible, you know. Whether it's like, you know, making video content, you know, maybe creating my own music or games, etc. You know, yeah. just, you know, just be me. Yeah. And you get the chance to do that like every day. Yeah. You know? Like it's it's incredible. Uh, it, I, I, I can't believe it. Yeah. It's it's surreal. Uh, yeah. It's been strange. Yeah. Good. I, in a good way. Yeah, of course. Actually, sorry. Just before we go on to uh, Tani Nani. Tell us a bit, a, a bit more about uh, Zoink Games. You know, like what yeah. was the first game that you worked on? You know, level design, etc. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I. Okay, I'm thinking about my response. Uh, I, <laughs> when fine. I started, I uh, when I talked to Klaus uh, when I was at school, he showed me Zombie Vikings, mm. uh, and then he also showed me Fey, which yeah. is the game that we did after Zombie Vikings. Uh, so I, I started as a level designer, uh, uh, on zombie Vikings. And then when that game released, the, uh, producer Hugo, Hugo Bille, mm-hmm. who, um, uh, he, he left the company to not be a producer anymore. Uh, and that was my like timing. I became the producer. So I was the producer for the console. No, the, uh, the ports. Uh, not the PS4 version, but uh, all of the other versions I was the producer for. Uh, so that was what I did. I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say. That's but fine. I, Look, you can tell me after after we finish recording. <laughs> there was a small game where I was a level designer on uh, a contract work for a, yeah. a small mobile game. I don't know if I'm allowed to say who, but it was a pretty big company. Okay. Well, that, well, that's yeah. fine. Leave it at that there. That's fine. Go for uh, it. Yeah, because I do actually have Zombie Vikings, you know, physical on PS4. Yeah, yeah. And what's cool is if you own the physical copy, you can play, is it like two extra levels of multiplayer or something? Um, is that not only on the Xbox One version? But it could be on the PS4. I don't I don't remember. I just oh, remember it's that PS4. it was... Oh. I think you can play the uh, Second to the Man level. That's one of them, I think. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty yeah, cool. I, I, if I remember correctly, I'm the one who did like almost every versus level. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Congrats! Some, some, thank you. Somebody had to do it, uh, <laughs> but it was mostly me and uh, and a guy called Emil uh, and a bit of the creative director Andreas. It was like that project was a lot of fun. Yeah, to work on. Uh, I'm waiting for the switch port, and like I've seen like no listen publicly <laughs> like it has been shown. Like, like uh, I know. <laughs> like, uh, you can tell me after. I mean, like, I want to see it happen eventually. Like, we have uh, Flipping Death. We have Sick to the Man. Yeah. We have, you know, with uh, That's, yeah. like, the only one missing. Well, uh, excluding uh, Ghost Giant. That's the only one yeah. missing, like. <laughs> but obviously stuff <laughs> you can't say. But, I mean. I, I like, don't think I can. And I, it's fine. But, I mean, like, like yeah. I know. But, I'm, I'm personally, I want to see it. 
you know yeah i would love to see it as well yeah and uh yeah I, okay that's enough about that there for now. <laughs> leave it at that there yeah so tell us about you know about your game like you give me a hands-on the other day and yeah i played like <laughs> I, I was you know texting i played like the first few levels i'm like oh my god like yeah like you really have to think about your strategy what you're going to do because be, like you do have objectives you know yeah. to get like uh the pink uh diamond the crystal yeah. and the what, what's the other one uh, yeah the heart as well isn't it or something like every level has two like i call them challenges but objectives yeah. it, it doesn't matter yeah one of them is always grab the crystal yeah and the other one could be like have them meet within a time limit or move x amount of yeah like below x amount of moves uh or don't have the characters falling more than 10 seconds yeah yeah uh, but like so, tell us about like how the game i, I guess the idea came about because I, I remember seeing it first yeah. originally on your twitter yeah and then it's like it just it changed so much visually oh yeah i mean like it is gorgeous and like i told you before i want this game on 3ds eventually just for the yeah. 3d depth that'd be cool but like tell us yeah. about you know the adventure for that game that you yeah had. I, I can start from the beginning uh back in 2000 and 18 it must have been uh yeah we um yeah 2018 yes we uh, in february it was the last month of zoink before we left zoink to do Elden pixels full time mm. um i'm always prototyping things like uh, playing out with things so me and my girlfriend at the time lived in different cities so I went, the bus ride between our cities uh, took like three and a half hours. So I was prototyping on the bus and I was inspired by a, um, a game called Ilumilu okay. for 360 uh, back in 2008, 2009. Um, it was a, a wonderful game or maybe 2010, 11. I don't know. Uh, it was a cute game. Uh, I loved it. Puzzle game. Uh, so Ilumilu and Lemmings, if you Lemmings, remember that yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that was the the emotions that I had when I went in to prototype it. Uh, and I remember I just wanted to make a puzzle game. Everything I do tends to have puzzle things, mechanics, or something like that always. Uh, so that was the beginning. So I, I prototype it and try different mechanics for like a month, maybe two. Uh, like when we did Elden Pixels full time, I kind of stopped right away uh, because we were focusing on the uh, the uh, Switch port for Elva's Awakening and making what is now Elva's Legacy. Uh, so, like, I had I had a few mechanics and like a handful of levels, but that was it. Uh, and I kind of left it on a shelf. Uh, and when during the summer break sometime I picked it up for like a weekend um, to fiddle with it, try out the menu and prototyping like the, how the bit, sorry, the menu could work. But then, uh, but then I just like, I don't have time. I need to like work on the Alva games. <clears throat> so uh, where are we now? Okay. So then, then when I decided that I wanted to leave, uh, and I got closer to like me actually leaving Elden Pixels. I like started to like plan ahead, what uh, like plan for the rest of the project was like, what do I want? What am I going to do? So I like I had the plan to like for the game uh, ready. Uh, so I just just worked on it mm. uh, and told people about it and showed it to people and had them playing it. Uh, and I actually had, I got the game to a point where I said, it's finished. There are, uh, in the game, there are uh, chapters. And each chapter uh, contained 12 levels. So there were six chapters, uh, which is like 72 levels. Mm. So I was like, this is, this is finished. It's done. But then I was in a position where, like, I have left Elden Pixels. Um, my company is not set up. Like, I had to start the company. Uh, so I did it, like, straight away after I left it. And that took, like, 
five six weeks uh and with everything like the like the company setting up the company takes time mm. so i was like i have all this time to i could do more I, because i i plan to to i wanted i wanted to get into more like streaming the development uh which i did uh so i i plan to like release the game with six worlds and then stream how i level designed the rest of the uh like more chapters uh but i was i was getting kind of bored i was like i i might as well just make these levels and add it to the initial release of the game uh so so that's what i did like the uh for the past what is it like since september i've been like uh, making levels and setting up the company yeah uh, so that is like more or less what i've done showed it to people and setting up the game yeah and like i did you know contact you and we got it an impact direct and there is yeah. there is one thing I'm, I'm mad at you for and you know rightly <clears throat> for not giving uh, me yeah that, yeah i know exactly what it is for not giving me that release date even though you had it but you didn't give it to yeah me. <laughs> Wait, I'm trying to remember why I was waiting for the release date. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I wonder why I was waiting for it. Uh, there was a reason, and I was thinking, crap, Barry, like, I think it was the, the day before, or was it, the day after yeah. the impact. The uh, Yeah, I remembered. I was like, Shh. Shit, I could have gave him the. You could have given it to me. <laughs> yeah, I could have. Shit. <laughs> well, I guess we had what was it? We had uh, January twenty twenty or something on the, uh, the trailer. Yeah, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Or Q one. Oh Q1. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All I needed was you know a couple of numbers you know twenty twenty third. Yeah. You know, January. <laughs> yeah, I could have done shit. Yeah. I want to. I I, I want to remember why. I, I was because I wanted to get to a point where I the game was more or less finished uh, by the time that I announced the date. Yeah, I don't. Was it by the? It must have been by the uh, beginning of December that you had the uh, the impact, right? Yeah, it was. I had it the fifth of December. Yeah, so yeah. the deadline was you know a few days beforehand. Obviously, yeah, because I have to get it. Yeah. You know rendered out and uploaded <laughs> yeah there was must have been something that that um like like as it might have been like the apple uh part of it where the game got like uploaded correctly to the apple and i was very cer certain that i i'm going to make this deadline yeah. for the like january 23rd um so i was waiting for like being able to okay i am going to be able to release the game yeah I know it's all good though. Like I'm only having a laugh with you. Next yeah. time. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the game is coming to console, mm -hmm. if I'm correct. Well, it's coming to Steam, Steam and yes. iOS. iOS. God, God, Kevin, I want it on console. I told you, 3ds. Yeah, yeah 3ds. <laughs> like it would have been cool. Yeah, yeah. I like. I'm definitely going to check it out. Yeah. See how far like Unity is capable on a 3ds yeah uh but yeah could have been cool yeah and like you know even like release some kind of themes as well on the 3DS. yeah <laughs> actually in saying that i was told by a developer one of them contacted them about uh mm -hmm. themes on the 3ds on the on the store like but nintendo they wouldn't take them for some reason no oh. which is weird you know considering yeah. Why I don't get right, like you know, like you, like you, you don't have to say anything, but I'll, I'll like I, I don't mind saying it at all. Why does Nintendo like refuse to take stuff? You know, like whatever you know, people publish on 3DS or Wii U say, like they're making money out of it, one way or another, aren't they? Mm, I, I guess so. But like, it just baffles me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but I don't, I don't know how big of their like I, I haven't looked into how much. Like how many games are still released on 3ds? Uh, you well, might know that. Well, last week we had one. Yeah. Uh, Silver Falls. Uh, three. Oh, sorry. <laughs> three. <laughs> three down stars on 3d for new 3ds. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was playing some. Was it last night? I can't remember, but 
Uh, yeah, no, that was actually meant to be delayed in Europe, but yeah. Nintendo released the uh, the one point zero version any anyway of the game because there was I think a couple of glitches in the game, bug breaking yeah. game. I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's it's not bad. I'm I'm enjoying it. It's kind of have like sort of like Silent Hill esque on 3ds, yeah. you know, but it's kind of cool. So, uh, I take it you created all the content in the game yourself. Did you make the music and stuff? Yeah, I did, and I was very like nervous about like showing it because I I wanted to like I like the idea uh, like it, I've always enjoyed small teams. That's why I joined like Zoink yeah. instead of another big company yeah. uh, because I, I liked small teams where I, I could like know a little bit about everyone mm-hmm. um and then we went even smaller scale uh with ellen pixels mm. or like we're four people uh and i like that uh but i've always enjoyed like learning new things and trying things out so with tani nani i was like i want to try do everything because I, I i found it very cool when like axiom verge yeah it was like he did everything and i think that's really cool i was like I've played music a couple of years yeah. uh, when I was younger. Sure. I think I, I think I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I, I, I tried it, and I, it was very. I think the the struggle in the beginning was like learning the software. But once I got that under control, it was like uh, I got in this this kind of like headspace where it was only music. I was making music for like. A couple of weeks and every time i got a melody in my head i picked up my phone and the uh the voice memo thing mm. and i recorded a melody uh so i had all these like like hooks uh melody hooks that i recorded um uh, with my my voice and then i went home and put it in the software and try to make it uh but yeah i did i did everything uh except the uh store assets and key art mm-hmm. uh my friend uh, Connie uh, did it. He uh, he helped out. Cool. Uh, but otherwise, everything. I want to try it. And yeah. I'm 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 actually I'm happy with it. Yeah. I'm very proud of how much I learned doing it. Yeah. I I I, I was like I just need to dive right in. Uh, so like tutorials and just studying. Like the greats, like people of Twitter, like pixel artists of Twitter. I just studied them and saw how they, how they did. Nice one. Techniques and yeah. whatnot. So I feel like for making music and games, the hardest thing is, isn't is actually, you know, well, for me anyway, it's actually putting uh, the music into the software because like, like it's the software can be, you know, like very confusing at first, you know, like like what yeah. the hell's going on? But but yeah. like like me, I made some music ages ago on you know on piano. Like I'd hum it, you know, and then I play it on piano and see if I can then mm. record it on my phone. But yeah. it's transposing it into software is the problem. Okay, <laughs> you know, because you may not have all the gear or like what way is the program set up and how do you do that? You know, and how do you hold the note for longer if you get me, etc. Yeah. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, I feel like it has to be something easier out there that can do yeah, that. Yeah, it has to be. <laughs> For people like but, me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I had a problem with, like, I I could, like, play it on a piano, mm. like, the notes. But on the actual software, I like, the timing of things yeah. wasn't always correct uh, in the software. So that was a little bit of my struggle with it. And, and also the constant worrying of, like, how long does the sound the song needs to be uh, in order for it not to get repetitive and all that stuff? So I, I studied a little bit of like music. I listened to a lot of like video game music and like what are the different parts of the. So I broke down a lot of songs. Like this is the beginning. This is this part. And this then this then this part loops and then this comes in. So I studied a lot of music actually. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. what, uh, actually, yeah, what video game composers would you, like, listen to in, in particular? Um, 
I would listen to Axiom Verge. Yeah. Uh, I would listen to I like I don't know the composer. That's the horrible part. Yeah, but see, Axiom uh, Verge, it, it was uh, Thomas Hop that made all the music yeah, yeah, himself. Yeah. Yes, I'll bring up the. Uh, <laughs> I got a list. I can actually name them. Yeah. Uh, so the Fess music from Fess, so Disaster Piece, uh, and Ben Prun- Prunty for FTL. Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's good. And then some uh, life formed is the name of it. Uh, I don't dust dust force. Okay. Some music of that game. So, and also Robert Kreese. Mm-hmm, of uh, course. <laughs> yeah, I had to. Like, I think he's one of the best. So yeah, I I had to study it. Like, check out uh, Yol as well. Yol Billa. Yeah. Yeah, I work with him. Yeah, but I mean, like, he's just like when I first. Like I told this to Zonk as well. Like when I first played uh, Sick as a Man, it yeah. was like the first indie game that I, like um it just changed my perception of indies completely. Yeah, because that game was so <clears throat> professional. Like oh, the quality of it was it was incredible. It's incredible, and it, it's like a small team. It's like what you know, and that's how I got you know. I guess if, like if it wasn't for Zonk, you know, playing you know ma- uh, making that game, I probably wouldn't even yeah. be talking to you. Don't take offense yeah. to that. No worries. Like, you know, like we probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have even met, you know, if you get me. Yeah. Because it's that game that got me into, I guess, indies and Zoink, you know. Yeah. I guess, like, like, sw- like Swedish uh, game people, developers, you know, whatever, composers are incredible overall. They are. <laughs> like, Some of the best got, in the world. We got ABBA. So. <laughs> no offense, but I think ABBA overrated. <laughs> I'm <Could> sorry. <laughs> ABBA and Avicii. I don't... Yeah. We got those. I know. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Actually, Avicii's dead. How long now? Is it two years or something? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Like, what was, was he? Like twenty-seven or something? Really young. Yeah, it's twenty-seven, tw- twenty-eight. Yeah. Uh, I can't like, believe that. Like. No, it's 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 insane. Yeah, and and as well, he has his own game. <laughs> he does. Where people from Gothenburg made it. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. No, my favorite uh, part uh, of Joel's music is when we made Zombie Vikings. And uh, I remember the last boss. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but mm. there's a guitar solo that kicks in yeah. after when the boss has a little bit of health left. And I remember like hearing it for the first time, like the goosebumps and everything. It, yeah. it, it was incredible. So... Back then, I like I knew the "Stick to the Man" soundtrack was incredible, but sitting there next to him while it was like, "This is a thing that I tried for the boss. What do you think?" And I was like, "Holy crap! This is yeah, incredible." Yeah, but uh, yeah. like his, I guess his work in uh, in Fay or Fee, what what does it call it? What way do you say it? I don't know, like Fay. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. <laughs> but like his music is incredible. But I, my favorite song game would be a uh, ghost giant i that yeah for me that is like animal cross in vr you know yeah i haven't played the final product you actually. have oh come on why i i i don't know i i don't own a vr and i haven't been to the office in a while i i was actually the producer for the uh the prototype oh okay that came but then i quit so no, someone yeah. else took over but see it's funny because i asked was a cl- who they ask? Uh, Klaus no, Olaf. Oh yeah, Olaf. Uh, yeah, yeah, I asked him. Yeah. See, the the tra- the original trailer had different yeah. uh, buildings and characters in it. Yeah, that didn't make the final game, and I noticed yep. that anyway. But I was like, oh, yeah, I par- like I copped on. Like, oh, these aren't in the game, you know, yeah. some of the level designs. <laughs> but yep. uh, it's that game is the best VR game I've ever played, hands down. I've heard that it's good. Yeah. Like with the story and everything. Story, oh my god, it's incredible. But I mean, it just like you like like you could just sit there and just like sit, you know, like live there in that environment, you know. Yeah. And just mess, like even like dragging the clouds around mess and it's just yeah. so much fun. <laughs> Feels like I need to go to the their office and knock on their door and be like I want to play a video game. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, actually, okay, so, like, I know I, I did say to you about your connection with, uh, you know, Swedish uh, game studios. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, image and form. 
for just yeah. okay. Who is your? I guess your 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 most favorite would it be Brian or Julius? <laughs> Ooh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, well, I love them both. Yeah, yeah. Mm, I met Julius. I did last year. Wait, you, you what? I, I met Julius. Yeah. Last year. In London. In right? yeah, in London. Yeah. Yeah, and it was just, it was just so cool talking to him. It's like, oh my god, Daniel Radcliffe from Harry Potter, <laughs> right? Classic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're both great, but I think uh, Putta has a special place in my heart, uh, actually, because he was the one before I talked to Zoink. Mm. I talked to Putta, and I was about to like we were talking about me potentially being like getting, doing my internship at them, uh, but when they that was yeah, but, yeah, but they like. Things didn't work out, yeah. uh, uh, so they recommended me to Zoink. Yeah, uh, and yeah, but it's just funny be, because like it's it's all the one like you know family now as such. Yeah, but yeah, wonderful yeah. publishing. Yeah, that's that's great. That's incredible. Yeah, and uh, of course I have to mention uh, Friendly Fire. Oh, the best people. Yeah, and like, like you know, like the, their game was you know it's it's nice because I had you to start the to direct, yeah, and then at the end, it. yeah, yep. I watched the entire thing. I saw it. Yeah. I was like, whoa! Yeah, but, I didn't know that they were going to be there. Well, there you go. I didn't see. I'm not, obviously I, I don't even know you. The only people who knows who's, uh, who's in the direct is yourself. But yeah. I don't tell anyone you know, what other you know game devs is in. Yeah, it, you know. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. No, but they're, they're incredible. Like, they were my... No disrespect to anyone else, but they those four people were the closest... My closest friend while I lived in Gothenburg. Yeah. They were, like, the best. We were on vacation together. Uh, and I, I remember uh, at a certain point in my life, I was like, we all should live together. And we were seriously considering it. Yeah. Uh, and now they are doing it. They're all living together. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And I lived with uh, Emil for a while, so they're they're just the best. Yeah, good people. Do you still celebrate uh, Pizza Fridays yourself? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I, oh. I don't eat that much pizza pizza anymore. I want though, but I I just don't. Yeah, yeah. I haven't had pizza since last year, so I'm. It's what is it now? It's like. Yeah, it's t- it's over two weeks. I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> is that a new year New Year's resolution? Well, I guess cut down on well, I don't <laughs> know, cut down on food perhaps. I mean, like, uh, I don't know, maybe just cut pizza for a good while, you know. Yeah. But yeah, no, pizza is pretty good though. So yeah, so uh, let's talk about E3 2020 this year. Yeah. So the news is out: Sony is skipping E3. Yep. Uh, Xbox Series X is launching with no exclusives for the time being, which is kind of yeah. funny. Yeah. And maybe we'll get a Switch Pro reveal or whatever they're calling it. You know, who knows? So, so tell me your take on Sony skipping mm-hmm. E3 for their own event. Okay, so they're skipping E3, which is in June, right? Mm-hmm. And their own thing is in September, October, or is it later? I think it's November, but I mean November. There's rumor, is it that it's coming out? Is it September, October? The console, October. Oh right, 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 yeah, something like that, maybe. So they'll have to do something that you know. Hmm. Who knows? That's interesting. Actually, yeah. is I, I could be like okay, I'm just speculating here. Of course, yeah. Either <laughs> they could be like we don't have anything cool, too cool yet, or they might not want to reveal anything before. Microsoft does. Yeah, they're playing it cool. I think. Yeah, Safe. because it's like they, no doubt, they dominated this generation of consoles. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's like they're a little bit scared. I think, like they don't want to, like they don't want to lose that position. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm excited to hear, like, more what it is. Mm-hmm. But I'm, um, hmm. Could be that they're waiting. Yeah. Just waiting for Probably. your game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Probably. They're waiting for my call. <laughs> but it's it's like you there mentioned, you know, I guess the dominated this generation. Yeah. Switch has beaten Xbox One in total sales, if I'm correct. That, that does not surprise me. Like, <clears throat> what the hell? And it's only yeah. over three years now? 
That's incredible. Yeah, 2017, 17, right? yeah. It's not even three years yet. Maybe I'm wrong with the incre- figures, but I mean, it's done so well. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's incredible. It's really good, actually. But what you said about Nintendo Pro, uh, like Nintendo Switch Pro potential. Yeah. Have we seen something like that with the other consoles from Nintendo? Well, yeah, I Is... guess they have a history of, like, just say, with the DS, Nintendo DS. Yeah, yeah. Then releasing the light, and then the DSi, you know, and then the XLs and stuff, you know, and new yeah, 3DS okay. and stuff. But Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But just, like, in saying that, like, you know, what it's, it's the same thing as Sony releasing the PS4 and then, re- then releasing the PS4 Pro. Like, yeah. They both played the exact same games, but the Pro was just a better system overall. But yeah. people may not want, you know, exclusive, like, new 3DS games that we do already have. Yeah. They want to play those games on standard 3DS. Yeah. You know, on like, will the same thing happen for Switch? And then their leak today of uh, Bioshock Collection. Wait, was that a leak? I thought it was an announcement. Well, I don't know. I, I've seen a leak or something. That, like, it wasn't officially yeah, it could, revealed yet. It could yet. be true. I, I didn't look very, like, close. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, that's, uh, well, I guess there was kind of talks about it, you know, a while back last year, yeah. but more is coming out of it now, you know, maybe we'll see a release soon, or maybe this summer, who knows what's going to happen, like, yeah. uh, but well, I guess with a Switch Pro, I am you know, we're hearing better CPU, yeah. but visually, maybe not that much better, maybe, I guess, more powerful console overall, but who knows, you know, to be yeah. honest, like. I think from a developer standpoint, I don't think it's going to like make too much difference because you still want to, since the um, the Nintendo Switch, like the original one, yeah. uh, already sold so many copies. Uh, do you say copies when you talk about consoles? Oh, yeah. Well, well systems, yeah. Yeah. It sold a lot of systems and you as a developer still want to support them uh, so it, it it won't matter if you got more uh, you got more um, CPU or whatever. You're still gonna support the lower end of the system um, to make sure that you can like make the game available to as much people as possible. Yeah. But yeah, it, it of course it depends on the game. Like if you got a specific game and you can market it as it runs smoothly on the uh nintendo switch pro yeah uh, whatever yeah, yeah but uh no it's interesting i guess we'll have to wait and see yeah uh, are you planning to get ps4 sorry ps5 on release date day uh, one? maybe not release date okay but like i will i will get i probably will get it yeah uh, because my ps4 currently like it spits out the cd nice like randomly uh luckily i don't play as much games from like disc disc yeah uh but like it makes a sound (laughs) yeah Uh, so it's kind of annoying um so i i think my my ps4 is living the last days uh so i hope it lasts until ps5 but probably not release day i take it you have maybe the original ps4 that came out oh yeah yeah Oh my god, what a big difference the Pro is and the Slim. You know, yeah. it's it's just like the new versions are just so much better built. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no. Okay. I was considering buying it. I yeah. was like I I have a working PS4. Yeah. Like you're like you like you're okay with it, you know. Yeah. Oh, okay, actually sorry. Seeing as you mentioned uh you've you play more digital. Like tell me your take. Do you prefer digital over physical or physical over digital? I Okay, here's the thing. I can enjoy a physical version of a game, especially if I worked on it myself. Yeah. However, I like to have, like, I ha- I don't like to have things fill up, like, the space. Oh, then you so see I- my conservatory right now. Hold on. Look yeah. What? Holy <laughs> shit. No. Hold on, I'll get you the other nope. side now. Uh, yeah, there we go. You see, that's in, that's insane. I've got <laughs> check, like, check out the BB pod. <laughs> from wow, that's stranding. <laughs> like I have like three books and a copy of 
the division oh nice too that's what i got like three books and a copy of the division yeah that, that is why I what i have no i don't like things that take up space okay no it's just it's just uh it's quite refreshing i think just to hear your take on it yeah because like, i guess people like myself you know and other game devs did like i get physical copies of their games <clears throat> you know like yeah. like they like to you know own the game if you get me oh yeah totally you know what i understand I, I, to- I totally get that yeah but the thing is like i i have a hard time playing a game for a long time uh so i'm in that part where i buy a game and i play it for 20 minutes and then i put it aside i'm like thank you i know what you are thank you uh which is bad i should play more games but <laughs> so it's good for me that they don't take up a lot of space yeah okay yeah. that's fair uh yeah so like like do you actually make the time for yourself to play games as well as you know make games <laughs> um, what way does that I... work for you <laughs> I've been kind of bad at it recently, um, yeah. but I, I before back in 2019, I think, I, I decided that I was going to play at least 30 minutes per day and like at least take notes of the thing that I played. Yeah. Let's say Hollow Knight, for example. I played Hollow Knight for a bit, didn't finish it. Too uh, hard. <laughs> yeah, too long. Uh, <laughs> like... I, yeah, so I wrote down the things like what I like, what I didn't like. So I tried to trick myself to play the game, but I could still like, improve my my something related to making games. Yeah. So, but the thing is, like, if a game, if someone says play this game, there are like hundred hours of content. I'm like, no, thank you. Like, The Witcher sounds cool. Dragon Age, cool. But they're too long. I don't have that time. Yeah, yeah. So if someone says play Limbo or um, what's the, their other game, um, uh, it, yeah, either way, yeah, Limbo, yeah. and like it's four hours, perfect. Thank you. And I know that I can finish it in an evening if I want to. Yeah, that is so much better for me. Yeah, actually, there is one game I, I'd recommend that I think you would absolutely love. A Go game called uh, Piku Niku. Piku Niku. I'm going to do it right now. P-I-K-U-N-I-K-U. I, like, I, what was it? It was this time last year it came out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I see. I've seen it. Uh, I-, I will play it. Yeah, like, me and my friend Mark played multiplayer, uh, like, recorded, like, the whole entire multiplayer, you know, levels. And it yeah. is the funniest thing I've ever played in a two-player game. Reason, Wait, have like, you... reason enough. Okay, so should I buy it on Switch? Oh, buy it, yeah, definitely, big time. Yeah. Yeah. I could probably play with my girlfriend. Uh, we try to play games together, so... Yeah, uh, it's honestly, it is a perfect game. Like, you will have so much fun. And, like, there's even racing levels, like Mario Kart levels. Like, cool. 2D ones. Good. It's so it's so much fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, That there's my, you know, recommendation for you. Buy that game. Good, uh, <laughs> I'll buy it. Uh, on Switch, I recently played uh, Heave Ho. What is it? It's like... Heave ho, uh, let's see if I can spell it in English. H e a, yeah. V e, yeah. H o, heave ho. Let's see. Hold on. Probably misspelled it. It's Devolver who uh, who uh, published it. Okay. It's like physics, kind of physics. Like you move Heave-ho on switch. Oh, yeah. The, jo- okay. the joystick I, I, yeah. moves the yeah. arms. And then with the shoulder buttons, you like grab. So it's very cute and you can pick up your friends. It's a great party game. Okay, so that's essentially kind of the same concept as Piku Niku. Sweet. Yeah, no, as in the legs and stuff, you'll see and move it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's very, that is, yeah, mm-hmm. you'll enjoy that. I, I did. I played it with my brother. He's yeah. 11. So we had a lot of fun. Yeah. And like, what's his take? I guess as a younger person on your, you like new making games. Does he like that? Or uh, he he think I think he thinks it's cool. Yeah. Like he he understands what I'm doing, but uh, so he wants to make game on his own. But he he's eleven. He plays Fortnite. So he's like me, and my friend, are gonna make a Fort Fortnite game. I was like, sure. 
Uh, but then I tried to explain, like, you know, there's a lot of people who worked on that game, and yeah, it's yeah. not easy to make it as your first game. Uh, but yeah, he 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 probably want to make games. Okay, so we'll cool. see. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess just before we go, like, I did want to talk about, uh, I guess, Star Wars. You have seen it, haven't you? I have. I have. Okay, obviously spoilers. Okay, I'm just letting you know now. There's gonna be spoilers. Like, if you haven't seen it, I'm sorry. It's your own fault. <laughs> so you could put a a timer up here that they could click to the point where in the interview where we skip, like it, when we finish talking about Star Wars, or just you know fast, or they can just do whatever themselves, just turn the interview off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, only messing. But yeah, okay. What was your take on it in Star Wars anyway? Did you enjoy it? Okay, the ending and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So I, out of the three. Like the last three of the trilogy, uh, I only saw or any of the new Star Wars movies. I only saw the first trailer for Force Awakens, which is the seventh movie. Mm -hmm. I saw one trailer, and that is the only trailer that I've ever seen. Because I was, I was like, I know it's Star Wars. I want to see it. I don't want to hear anything about it. Yeah. Um, and I'm not a very like critical person when it comes to movies. Okay. Like I don't have a lot of opinions. So I go into the movie, I'm being entertained and then I leave. That's it. Mm. Uh, so I, I enjoy the movie. Uh, I was, my eyes were filled with tears a few times. I cried sometime. It was incredible. I had a great time. Then I tweeted about it. I watched the movie. I liked it. Yeah. And then, like, an hour later, I, I saw people not commenting on mine, but they were tweeting, like, it was bad, and it was this, and it was that. I was like, I'm out of touch with everyone, everyone else. Uh, because apparently, like, there was a lot of people who didn't like it. Yeah. Uh, when they first saw it. Uh, I liked it. Yeah, I, like, I seen it three times in the space of 48 hours. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I, I like I am obsessed with Star Wars. I love it. But see the thing yeah, is, yeah, I can like, hear that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The way I see it, right? Like, like any movie you go to, people are going to complain about it. You know, like if they like it or yeah. not. Just yeah. don't bitch about it. Okay. So here's my thing. <clears throat> if you, if you're going to be like, you know, be a dick about it, just go make your own Star Wars movie and wait till people yeah. you know critique you. you yeah. Know. Basically, that, that's that's essentially what you do. Yeah. <laughs> Like it, I think it's okay to have opinions, but yeah. it is feel. I feel personally, yeah. I yeah. feel like a lot of people try to force their opinions on others yeah. and be like, "This is facts." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I because agree. they yeah. did this thing, everything is bad. It's like not necessarily, but sure. Yeah, you can't win. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't go into arguments at all. I was like, "Cool, okay, you didn't like it, sweet." That's fair Sorry. enough. Okay. <laughs> yeah so uh are you happy with the ending how it ended uh i i think so yeah like i i wasn't expecting a twist at all okay i was like <laughs> incredible yeah uh, so like because i i didn't see a trailer i like i didn't know i don't know how much we're gonna censor ourselves uh but i didn't know like the the villain yeah okay the big, big villain i i didn't know that that character was going to be in the movie at all i was okay. like holy shit so that was like mind-blowing to me i was like where how cool i think oh. disney ruined that though i'm sorry I'm, I'm gonna mention it now why did it's the, fine okay why did disney reveal palpatine beforehand oh they did it in the trailer yeah but like they had him laugh at the very end like if they had kept that a secret oh. the whole time yeah, people would have been like, "What the fuck?" That was you that know, could have been no more one, impactful. Yeah, no one would have expected it. And then they brought him on yeah. stage at D twenty three. You know, brought uh, the it, the actor out. Yeah. Why? Why ruin that? Yeah, like people was, were still gonna watch Star Wars regardless. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it could have been more impactful. Big time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but it looked like at the very <laughs> end, Ray was carrying. A double-sided lightsaber. Yeah. 
just the way it looked, the the actual you know the lightsaber looked, the yeah you know the handle, it looked like it was double sided. Yeah, but wasn't it her staff? Yeah, yeah, I think that's cool. Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, it's funny because I was just saying to myself before I seen the movie, like, oh my god, why haven't we seen like a yellow lightsaber? And out of nowhere, it just pops cool. out. <laughs> that's cool. I think that's cool. Okay, I, I, I I'm not I'm not really into like. Uh, why different Jedi's have like different types of colors? I'm yeah. not sure why. So I don't know if the yellow color symbolizes something. But I thought I thought it was cool. Yeah, I I liked it. You know, uh, I guess the the biggest thing I didn't like. I think that they they really should have shown off uh, Christian Hadenson as Anakin. You know, from yeah. from episode three. Well, you know, I guess yeah. as himself now at his age, like yeah. that would have been cool. That would have been cool. Yes, but we like we 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 only heard him when he was you know talking to Ray, uh, like when, yeah. when they're all talking to Ray, like in in her head. Yeah. But, uh, no, that was cool though. That that, that was ending, cool. Yeah. The only thing, uh, like I have seen the other two movies as well, uh, Solo and shit, uh, Rogue, Rogue One. One. Yeah. Yeah, I I like them. Uh, the only thing out of these five movies that I didn't like, as I said, I'm not a very critical person. Uh, the only thing when it comes to movies, the only thing that I didn't like was in episode eight when Leia was flying in space. That was the oh, only yeah, thing yeah. that I felt was off. Otherwise, I'm like cool with everything else. I'm not. Yeah, I just go with it. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, I thought it was okay. I don't know, mm-hmm. but I guess it was different. Uh, Last Jedi. Yeah, which uh, I um, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but you know, so yeah. I guess uh, before we wrap up, you know, let's uh, I guess finish off you know with your game, and is there anything else you want to talk about the game before it comes out? Like you know, it's out twenty third of January. Can correct. Yeah, you know, like where can people get your game? People can buy the game on Steam. Yeah. You search for Tani Nani. Yeah. And it's also available on iOS. You also search for Tani Nani. Um, and that's where it's going to come out first. We don't know. I, do, I know. <laughs> but I haven't announced like future things. Yeah. Uh, but because when you're a solo developer, there's a lot you have to do on your own. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I got the game working yeah. um, on two platforms. Okay, before so we go, right? Where, yeah. Please explain where the name came from. <laughs> uh, well, uh, the game is inspired by Ilu Milu. Yeah. Uh, and one of the characters are named Ilu and Milu. So I wanted to a similar thing because I, I I've met a few of the developers. I tried to get an internship there. Uh, uh, when I started, uh, it didn't work out, but that's a, another story. Uh, and so I, I love that game and I wanted to like show my appreciation for it in some way. Uh, so I named one of the characters Tani or Nani, I don't know. And I tried to like, what could be like the same thing, like Tani, Nani, Kani, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so that like, when I come up with names, I try to combine like things that I want, and then I Google it to make sure that it's not like a like when I Google it. Oh, there are ten million hits or yeah, two hundred and fifty yeah. million hits. So it's a combination of things. So it could be like banjo kazooie or ukulele kind of thing. <laughs> kind of, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Kev, thanks for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. You know, it's our first Anytime. podcast of 2020. <clears throat> Where can you find you on social media? People can find me on... I'm usually on... I'm always on Twitter mm. uh, and also on Twitch. So people can find me at Anderson Kev. Anderson is like the most common... I looked it up, actually. Anderson is the most common last name in Sweden. Uh, and then it's 60% of my name. So Anderson Kev, that is <laughs> nice. Deadly. All right, guys, you know, thanks for watching the show. Really appreciate it. I will leave links in the description below for you to check out the game on Steam as it's out next week. 
and you will see some gameplay you know soon too it's pretty fun and i guess you can play with keyboard and gamepad and correct yeah nice also one. you can play with the mouse on steam yeah so there is that option as well yeah all right guys thanks for watching you can of course check us out on youtube twitter and instagram and for more i guess indies and gamecube right here right yes all right guys see you soon bye bye